Have you ever tried to sell something, but have forgotten to include the important bits? Uh-oh. Let's say you have a marketing plan that's launching soon, a new website, maybe an offline workshop, and you start to talk it up, but you completely forget to include the piece that's going to help your customers or clients to buy it? Oh. Yeah. You know what? I have too. It's me, Jill Salzman, here to talk to you about entrepreneurial blunders, ways that entrepreneurs shine, and valuable lessons about growing your biz. This week, I'm going to talk to you about how my memory failed me and how one of the biggest events that I've ever planned couldn't happen because of one key aspect that I completely forgot to include. You're going to think I'm a real genius after I tell you this one. So about two years into running The Founding Moms, we had 500 members. That is astronomical for someone who two years previously was sitting around crying in her home office, wondering how she was going to build a business with two little kiddos at home. And when I started to invite people in Chicago to join me, tell me how they're doing their marketing, their branding, their sales, they would start showing up and more and more would start showing up. It was just something that I had never anticipated or expected to grow the way it did. So at the 500 member mark, a couple of people had come up to me and said, I'd really love to meet people from other cities. At the time, we had no online platform. People were just meeting in person. Remember those days? In an effort to remedy that, I thought, this is the year. We're going to have a conference. So I immediately started calling and visiting venues that could host us. And every single venue that I visited said, oh, well, for a day or for two days, you can have the venue all to yourself for just, and they would say a number that had about a thousand zeros after it. Uh, we couldn't afford that. We only had 500 members. I finally landed on the place. It was going to be a music venue. Why? I was intimately familiar with music venues from my days running a music management company. I would book bands all around Chicago, and I knew the spaces that were going to be really helpful for people who wanted to convene, learn from each other, learn from somebody on a stage. So I had the venue in mind, and I told them, sit tight, I'm going to give you a deposit, but I'm going to come back to you once everything's worked out. I sent them $2,500, and the venue was mine. What does that do for an entrepreneur planning a huge event? It gets them more pumped. Yes! So the next step I took to secure this glorious idea was to go look for food. That's not the most important part of a day, but it's because I suddenly felt like I was planning my own wedding. I went out and I started interviewing restaurant after restaurant. I wanted healthy options. I wanted affordable options. And I landed on the place that was perfect for catering the first Founding Moms Conference. Then I moved right on to the speakers. To me, that's one of the most important aspects to a conference. It's the reason that people attend. It's what leaves people with an impression long after they've attended your conference that it was a good or a really terrible experience. So I thought up all of the greatest speakers that I knew that I had spoken on stages with, that I had seen speak at other events that I loved. I ended up booking eight speakers. I had eight amazing speakers who would do TED-like talks. And then there were four extras to do breakouts throughout the day. Mind you, I had only rented for a day because that's how much I could afford with the venue. So the venue had their deposits. The speakers were promised their speaking fees. The food didn't need a deposit yet, but I knew how much that was going to cost. Then I was off to the races. For those of you who love to plan events, you know what I mean. I loved starting to think about all the details, how many mics we would need on the stage at a time. What would the tables be covered with? What kind of merch did I want to have sold throughout the event? I would ask the speakers to supply me with books. I would ask the venue to give me the introduction to their engineer so we could talk all about lighting. We could talk all about sound. We could make sure we had enough easels throughout the venue. Then I got to talk to the catering coordinator at the venue so we could make sure that the food would flow at the exact right moments. I was excited, I kid you not, about bathroom signage. 
It's pretty important. I knew that. We'd be a room full of women. I got in touch with my graphic designer. She started designing logos and signage and agendas. I was pretty much ready to go. All contracts were in order. All the details, all the minutia of the event were all figured out by the time that we were ready practically to open the doors. We were about two weeks out from the event. And then a funny thing happened. I forgot to sell tickets. What do you say? Nobody hands you the manual on this stuff in entrepreneurship. Nobody makes sure that you know exactly what you're doing. I could have Googled this. I could have called some friends who'd hosted events who would have said to me, Jill, at least three months in advance from any event that you have, you want to start promoting said event to the people who could potentially attend the event. But I didn't know. I thought I'd, I'd gotten everything all the way to the bathroom signage down pat. I didn't know that I was supposed to let people know. This is going to sound really nuts. But I thought through osmosis, somehow people would just sense they would read my mind and know that I was so busy with my head in the sand planning this stuff that it would just occur to them to go to the internet, try to find the tickets that weren't anywhere to be found, and at least inquire with me. Hey, Jill, I can't find tickets to your upcoming conference. Can you let me know where I can find them? It didn't happen. Nobody knew because I wasn't talking to anyone about it except the vendors. So by the time we were two weeks out, I finally said something very quietly. Oh, hey, by the way, guys, we're having a conference. Crickets. Nobody cared. And what occurred to me was this marketing thing. It's real. It's what needs to happen. So what I mean by that is if you're planning anything, a website launch, an event, oh, I don't know, a 500 person conference, you need to let people know way in advance. And here's why. If they hear about it for the first time two weeks out, they're not interested, right? From a consumer's perspective, you understand that. If you hear about a concert showing up near you tomorrow, you already have plans. You're not so interested. You just heard about it. You might have missed it. The perception is it must not be so important because it hasn't been drilled into my brain the way that TV commercials are, the way that radio ads are. I didn't drill it into anyone's noggin. All I did was plan and plan and plan. And by the time I made the announcement, it felt like no one cared. When in actuality, they had no reason to care because I gave them no heads up. They need to know how important it is. You need to clap your hands and stomp your feet and give them enough advance notice so that by the fifth and sixth time that they're seeing or hearing about this upcoming event, they start telling themselves, oh, you know, I, I really think I should make some time for this thing. You know, I really should rearrange my schedule for this. Oh, let me check and see if my friend Sally is going to this. You give the consumer enough space to figure out where they fit into the whole thing. You give the consumer enough FOMO so that they have fear that if they've heard about it this many times and they're not going to go, maybe they're missing something. It was pretty devastating. Forgetting even the economic impact that it had on my fledgling little business at the time. I was truly bummed. I had worked so hard. I was an earnest, honest entrepreneur who wanted to bring all kinds of people together in real life and make sure they met one another. So when those who had said to me, I'd really love it if you had a conference of sorts, never even bought a ticket, I was actually offended. I took it personally which of course is the cardinal rule as an entrepreneur. You can't take anything that happens in business personally, but of course we do. And I did. And it taught me so many lessons in one huge mistake. It taught me, first of all, don't ever put a deposit down unless you're sure that people are coming. Second of all, it really taught me about the temporal way to promote something. You need to give it so much time not because you need to get in touch with more outlets, but because you need to bang the news over your customers' heads a million times. That gives them a sense that it's important. That gives them a sense that they might be missing out. And the best thing that could have come out of that whole experience is that I learned not to take failures personally. I realize now that I took so many blunders personally 
I was hurt because it always felt like I did everything right, but other people didn't care. When in fact, it's too complex. There are too many factors to have it be your fault or to have it be the customer or client's fault. I'm very happy to report to you that two years later, I did it again. I went ahead and I booked the same venue. I nailed down the same food. I called back those speakers and I said, you guys, we're taking the show on the road again. And guess what happened? The Founding Moms Conference of 2014 happened. That's what happened. You're here at this conference today to help you think big, to help you get the skills you need, to create businesses that will create wealth, create jobs, create value. And I urge you to take advantage of that opportunity. Thank you. It was an outrageously incredible day. We had the most incredible speakers impart the most incredible educational tips for us that day. Christy Hefner was our speaker. We had news media crashing the stage. It was the best day. Such a good day that we're going to do it again soon. And I'm going to let you know far in advance of the date when the next Founding Moms Conference is going to take place. I promise. You don't call. You don't write. Why not do both? Call or text me at 708-872-7878 or reach out to me at jillsalzman.com slash podcast to record a message so that I can talk to you in a future episode. Thanks to Amanda, Lindsay, and Aaron for making this episode with me. And thanks to you for listening. I'll see you next week. 